Good afternoon, Gospel Life Church. Uh, thank you all for joining us again for our elder-led prayer. Uh, as you can see, uh, this afternoon we're doing things a little bit differently. Uh, so we are recording this to you all via a Zoom call just for the sake of uh, our own health and as a means of uh, social distancing. Uh, if you noticed last week, uh, we were pretty close to each other. So this week we've created a little bit more space, but thankful again for the means of technology that allows us to continue to uh, do these and to um, just uh, have a, a pastoral presence for you all as we invite you into this time of prayer with us. Um, just a couple of announcements as we get started. Um, as it regards our Sunday gatherings and our gospel communities, we just want to make you aware that um, through the end of April, we're going to continue doing things as we have been doing, uh, meaning that we are going to continue to hold online services and encourage our gospel communities to meet online as well. Um, we are continuing to uh, just monitor the situation, uh, keep track of the guidance that we receive uh, from uh, both our state and local governments and uh, make the best decisions possible um, as we consider when we will be able to meet again in the future. So we will be sure to keep you all informed and updated uh, as those plans develop. And we look forward to the day that we are able to meet again uh, with one another face to face. Um, additionally, as we think about just our ministries, uh, I mentioned on our last uh, elder led prayer that I was working through a plan to just kind of um, think through this season of ministry and how we could do things um, perhaps a little bit differently to uh, keep our ministries intact during a time when we're not able to meet face to face. And so I want you all to know that, uh, that, that, is continuing to, that is, I'm continuing to work on that um, and we'll be rolling uh, out some of those things very soon. No big drastic changes, but basically how do we still perform the ministries that we are seeking to uh, perform, but in a way that allows us to do so during this particular season. Uh, one of the things that we're excited about that we'll be launching soon is um, our ministry to men now that we have Nathaniel Eisler Williams leading that um, and doing an, an online brother to brother gathering. Uh, so men be looking forward to that coming up here in the very near future. As any other plans develop that we need to uh, let you know of, we'll be sure to make you aware of that through these announcements or through announcements on our online Sunday gathering. Uh, so thankful that you're with us today and uh, we're going to go ahead and get started here. All right. Thanks, Jesse, for that. Um, and we are so excited for uh, what Nathaniel's going to be doing with this brother to brother gathering and just also want to recognize the work that uh, Victoria and her team have done with those sister to sister gatherings. I think the more connection we can have with one another, uh, the better. So let's go ahead and jump into our time of prayer together. And so uh, once again, I would encourage you to uh, sit down, um, look at the length of this video, whether it's 15, 20 minutes, whatever it is, um, and, and set aside that time to pray along with us and also to use this as a guide to, to be praying throughout the week and, and continue as we talk to you on the phone, as we get those um, connection card prayer requests, send those into us that definitely influences the things that, that we are praying for uh, this afternoon. So uh, like we've done the last few weeks, I want to begin by uh, reading words of scripture influence uh, my prayers to uh, God and the things that we're seeking to pray about, the things that he's laid on our hearts. I think it's good to pray in line with the words of scripture. And so let's look together. Psalm 15. Uh, you can pause this, grab a Bible if you'd like. Um, psalm 15. This is a Psalm of David. We read, O Lord, who shall sojourn in your tent? Who shall dwell on your holy hill? He who walks blamelessly and does what is right and speaks truth in his heart. Who does not slander with his tongue and does no evil to his neighbor, nor takes up a reproach against his friend. And whose eyes a vile person is despised, but who honors those who fear the Lord, who swears to his own hurt and does not change who does not put out his money at interest and does not take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. Let's pray together. Father, as we read this Psalm, Lord, just as I, I read it this morning, uh, 
thinking uh, about what to pray through, this psalm just stuck out to me as, as something that um, I believe we need to pray for as a people. And so, Lord, as we consider David asking that question, who shall dwell in your tent? Who shall dwell on your holy hill? Lord, we know he's talking about the tabernacle. He's talking about your presence in the temple. He's, he's talking about who shall be with you, who shall be in your presence. And Lord, that is the longing that we have. Even in this time of social uh, distance, we, we long to be with you. And so I pray that you would be near to us. We would be near to you through the means of grace you've given us. We would thank you uh, that we can be near to you because of uh, the work of Christ. But Lord, as we look at this, this psalm, he says, the one who can be near to you is the one who walks blamelessly and does what is right and speaks truth in his heart. And so Lord, that at first seems so burdensome. It seems like uh, bad news to us, Lord, because we know that we don't walk blamelessly. We don't always do what is right. We don't always speak truth in our hearts. But Lord, we thank you that in Christ, uh, this is how you see us. In Christ, in a very real way, we have done these things. He walked absolutely blamelessly. He did everything that was right. He uh, spoke in truth, and he always uh, spoke from a truthful and pure heart. And so, Lord, we thank you that he lived the life that we should have lived but didn't. But because of faith in him, uh, we have, in a very real sense, uh, walked this way before you. And so we praise you that through Christ, through faith in Christ, Lord, you see us in this way. Uh, through faith in Christ, the ways in which we have not walked blamelessly before you, uh, he has paid for those sins on the cross and risen from the grave. And so, Lord, I pray as we consider that, uh, the access to you that we have because of the perfect life of Christ, because of the substitutionary death of Christ, because of the victorious resurrection of Christ, Lord, I pray that we would draw near to you and we would seek to see our lives marked by the way of Jesus, that we would, by your grace, try to live into these things the best um, that we can and, and to uh, accordance, in accordance with the ability you give us by your spirit. And so, Lord, as your people, as your people who have faith in you, who know that everything we have before you is because of Jesus, we do pray that you would enable us to walk in a way that is pleasing to you. We do pray that you would enable us to do what is right before you, to speak truth in our hearts. Lord, we pray that we uh, would not slander with our tongue or speak evil against our neighbor. Lord, would you protect the unity of Gospel Life Church? Would you protect our words. Lord, help us not to be a people who tear one another down through gossip, through slander, through constantly bringing up the reproach that we might have against one another, against our friends. Lord, would you protect us from these things? Would we, out of love, Lord, speak um, in a way that assumes the best of one another, that does not tear one another down? Lord, I pray that we would not look to those who are vile, Lord, who do not honor you as those who we should seek to be like. But Lord, I pray that we would honor those who fear you. Lord, I pray that we would honor those and seek to uh, follow the examples of those who fear you, those who do not, um, who swear to their own hurt, meaning that they keep their word even when it's costly. Lord, I pray that we would be a people who do that, who speak the truth and keep our word to one another. And Lord, we pray as we consider this last verse, um, during this time of hurting and people and financial difficulty, Lord, would you protect us from greed? Would we uh, not be a people who take advantage of those who are in need? Would you help us to uh, be a people of justice as you, God, are a God of justice? I pray that uh, we would not uh, take advantage of people through, um, through um, acting towards them in a, a way that's motivated by the love of money. And so, Lord, we pray that you would do these things in our hearts, that you would enable us to walk in these things by your spirit. And Lord, we thank you that though we will not walk in these ways perfectly, that Jesus, you did. And because of that, we can be near to you. And so, Lord, draw us near to you even now uh, as we pray to you. In your name I pray. Amen. Father, uh... We pray for the members of Gospel Life Church, uh, God, specifically uh, for many who need to get out of the house, whether it's shopping, God, or a doctor's visit, or um, just different things that we have to do. I pray that you would continue uh, to protect us uh, from getting sick, from getting ill, God, that our bodies would remain healthy. 
Um, and just specifically this uh, COVID-19 virus, uh, I pray that uh, you would graciously um, keep us uh, healthy um, as we go about our day to day and as we seek to uh, uh, just diligently distance ourselves so that we might uh, be a friend to our brothers and sisters and to others um, and just maintaining a healthy um, lifestyle during this season. And God, I pray that we would all pause and praise you now that you have kept us healthy. You've kept many of us healthy and free from this virus. Um, and we do ask for many more days of your favor in that way. And God, uh, I do pray uh, just as we consider the text of scripture that we're in in, in Colossians and what's coming up this week on, uh, from your word, uh, that you would grant us uh, a humility, grant us um, uh, a new awareness, a renewed awareness of the deceitfulness of false doctrine, of false teaching, of those things that are shadows but lead us away from Christ, who is the substance, who is the shadow maker. God, uh, would you do that in the hearts of your people as we prepare to study your word this Sunday? Um, God, and I pray that we would give you thanks. We do give you thanks for healthy churches, for a gospel life church, a healthy church uh, in doctrine, and pray that you would continue to protect us from um, the deceitfulness of sin and false teaching and the world and others who would lead us astray. Um, God, would you maintain the healthiness of doctrine and the purity of doctrine at Gospel Life Church for generations to come? Yes, Lord. Um, we know this happens as we diligently commit to your word and study your word and uh, in community grow uh, with one another uh, and seek to honor you. Uh, so, God, would you grant us wisdom? Grant us the grace we need to understand your word, um, to love your word, to not despise it, um, so that we might hear from you and uh, do the good works you called us to do in a faithful and honoring way. Uh, God, so thank you for this time, this opportunity to pray to you. I pray that it would be an encouragement to your saints as they pray alongside with us. Father, I just pray uh, as we come to you, we recognize that you are the God who saves, Lord. You are the one who saved us. You, um, by your spirit, Lord, brought us to faith in you. And so we praise you for that. And Lord, we know that you want to save many more people, uh, people that you've placed around us. And so God, we pray for opportunities to be a light unto the gospel uh, to those around us. Lord, open our eyes to the loss and the hurting that we um, that we see, Lord, that we can from a distance talk with, that we can encourage. And Lord, I just want to start by praising you for uh, the reports I've heard this week of a couple members of Gospel Life who have been able to share the gospel, even uh, over means of technology like this. Lord, we praise you that you are still opening doors for the gospel to be shared. And so, Lord, I pray that that would increase. Lord, would you uh, bring us into um, the path of people uh, who need you. Lord, I pray that as, as you're working in the hearts of those around us, as those um, around us are filled with perhaps fear and anxiety over what's happening. Uh, the report I heard this week was just that, someone who was fearful because of what was happening. And, and ask someone, ask a coworker who, uh, as far as she knew, was a Christ follower, who was religious in her words. And uh, the, the opportunity was there to share the gospel. Lord, would we see more of that? Would we, um, Lord, would we be able to um, be good stewards of this time and reach out to those around us and invite them to embrace the gospel, the good news of Jesus in every area of life. And so, Lord, we pray that you would continue to open the door for those things and that you would continue to work by your spirit through the preaching of the gospel. Lord, we pray for our people, Lord, that are at home right now. Lord, I, I know that there is time to dwell on um, this situation, there's time to dwell on uh, things that can cause us to be afraid. Um, Lord, there's time to fall into sin. Lord, I pray that you would protect us, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you would give us a desire, a, a deep burning desire to commune with you through the means of grace that you've given us. Lord, I pray that uh, for anyone in Gospel Life Church who has extra time right now, Lord, would they... Um, 
find their hearts drawn to read your word, to pray to you. Lord, I pray for those that do not have extra time right now. Would you, um, Lord, in light of that, um, just show them how much more even now that they need your word and they need prayer and they need to sacrifice time or to get up earlier or to stay up later or to skip a meal so that they might read your word and they might commune with you uh, in times of prayer. Lord, would you stir up within us a desire to be with you? Just like we saw in Psalms 15, Lord, that um, David wanted to be with you. He wants to be in the tabernacle. He wants to be in the temple in your presence. And Lord, because of Jesus, we can be near to you. So Lord, would we not neglect that great gift that you've given us, but would we be with you through the means of grace, through your word and through prayer? And Lord, as we're able through the fellowship that we have with one another. Fathers, I consider this time, Lord, consider the people of Gospel Life Church, consider us as um, beings that you've created in your image. The truth comes to light, Lord, that you've created us to be relational beings. And in this particular time, we are struggling and working through a season where we are um, apart from one another, Lord. Um, in various kinds of relationships, Lord, whether it be relationships that we enjoyed with neighbors, relationships that we enjoyed with family, um, and most importantly, relationships that we enjoy as brothers and sisters in Christ. And so in the midst of that, Father, um, these relationships can deteriorate, Lord, um, and it can be hard to maintain these, Lord. So I pray during this time that you would strengthen these relationships, Father that you would uh, enable us to maintain contact with those that we love, Lord, our family, uh, that you would give us opportunities, Lord, in safe ways that allow us to um, align with our convictions, to interact with our neighbors, Father. Uh, and as we consider the church, Lord, that you would protect the strength of those relationships there, Lord. I pray that, that the members of Gospel Life Ch Church and its attendees, Lord, that they would um, share and take part in our Sunday gatherings, Lord, that it would uh, in some way maintain the unity that we have as brothers and sisters in Christ and lend toward that, Lord. I pray that they would participate in their gospel communities, Father, on a weekly basis to be able to continue to touch base with one another, to pray for each other's needs, to encourage one another in your word and in your truth, that they may be um, strengthened and grown in their faith during this season, Lord. I pray that in all their interactions, Lord, however they may take place in whatever capacity or in whatever platform, Lord, that they would be loving and kind towards one another, Lord. Um, I pray that you would just protect these relationships, Father. Also along with that, Lord, um, I think as we, as beings kind of just work through feeling um, isolated, Lord, or, or living in particular times of isolation, um, negative emotions and negative feelings can creep in towards one another. We can uh, allow assumptions to take the place of truth. Um, we can refrain from giving one another uh, the benefit of the doubt in particular situations, Lord. Um, multiple things can occur that hinder our relationship our relationships with one another because we are apart from each other, Lord. Uh, I'll be honest, particularly as I consider this, uh, this season that you have us in, Lord, and the varying perspectives that we all have on what is taking place, Lord. Um, I pray that this wouldn't be a time for peripheral issues to come to the forefront as to how we uh, feel about the current situation or how we are individually uh, thinking or processing it, Lord, but that our eyes and our hearts would turn to one another, Lord, and consider how those in our body are processing this time and handling it, Lord, if there's anxiousness there, if there's worry there, Lord, and how we might speak words of encouragement to one another to build each other up in Christ rather than to create distance and tear each other down, Lord, with peripheral thoughts and issues and feelings, Lord. So, Lord, would you preserve our unity during this time in our relationships and strengthen those, Lord? I also want to bring before you, Father, the marriages of Gospel Life Church again, Lord, as we spend more and more time 
uh, in our households in close proximity with one another, Lord. Uh, this is bound to be a season where um, our sin comes to light. It's a stage for our sin to come to light and to play out. And it's practically going to play, play out in uh, the relationships that we have with uh, husband and wife, Lord, or with our children, Father. So I pray that you would protect those relationships as well, Father. Yes, bring these sins to light. Let them come out, Lord. Use this as a means of sanctifying us, but help us to respond, Lord, as people that uh, have your Holy Spirit that indwells within us, Lord. Let us be uh, slow to anger, Lord. Let us be quick to listen. Let us have repentance upon our lips, Lord, to be apologetic towards one another where we sin against each other, Lord, and to seek uh, the good and well-being of our spouses, of our children, of those that we live with, Father, such that we may glorify and honor you in this time together, Lord. Use it to, to fight against our selfishness, Lord, to fight against our egos, to fight against our preferences, Lord, rather to serve one another sacrificially, Lord, especially for the men of Gospel Life Church, as that is the call that you have given us to be representatives of Christ within our homes, Father. God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for where we know we will fall short in these endeavors, where we will harm one another and sin towards one another relationally, um, that the perfect righteousness of Christ and the price that he has paid for our sin will cover those faults, Lord, that you still see us as holy and blameless because of the work of Christ, Lord. And would that very um, image of your grace spur us on to pursue holiness all the more. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, the Gospel Life, uh, thanks for uh, joining with us. I'd encourage you to continue to watch uh, in future weeks and uh, obviously on Sunday, our worship service. Um, and I encourage you uh, personally, just reach out and connect. If you want to talk to myself or the other pastors, your Gospel Community Group leader, other members, uh, avail yourself to the means that we have to connect um, don't wait until you feel isolated, feel depressed. Make it a regular part of your routine to just call, to chat, to text, um, to fill that gap. That There is a gap um, of not being able to gather uh, physically with uh, your brothers and sisters. So uh, don't, don't hesitate to reach out, to ask for help, ask for prayer uh, from one another. Let the body thrive at this time uh, through the means that we have. Um, one other thing I'd encourage you, uh, you may not know this, you probably don't, we haven't announced it. I get to preach this Sunday, Lord willing. Yeah. And so I would, uh, encourage you, uh, to, uh, to pray for me. Um, uh, especially since technically I'll be preaching Saturday morning. Uh, so one less day of prep, which is fine. God is Wait, gracious in that. Area. Huh? It's not live on Sunday. Not live. Oh, uh, it, is it? I just, oh, wait, I, no, you know, you're saying no. People know, Tyler. I've already talked to people. Uh, they know, y'all know that we pre record that. Uh, at least now you do. Shock. Uh, so, anyway, your prayer is appreciated. That, that's kind of all I wanted to say about that. Uh, it's an honor to be able to prepare and do that for you guys. Uh, so, I think with that, uh, thanks for joining us. God bless you. We hope you have a great week, uh, and we'll talk to you later.